Hey, good afternoon, guys. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to have the chance to share a few ideas with you this afternoon. As mentioned in the introduction, I'm here to share a little bit about my experiences. I had the honor and the privilege to start two companies from my dorm room. One is an undergraduate and one in business school. One company was no technology exclusively in the United States. The next is a high technology company that services internationally. But through these experiences, there are three common threads I want to share with you today. Number one is the importance of mission, the importance of model, and building momentum. And how anyone here in this audience can become a dorm room entrepreneur or can become more entrepreneurial in your profession. Now, I look forward to sharing some insights here because I too discovered my potential using entrepreneurship and I know that these basic lessons can also ignite your own passion for entrepreneurship. Now, let's get started by discussing a little bit on the mission. The reason why we start with mission is because it's the most important thing. When you have your mission right, everything can fall from there. Now, how do you find your mission, both personally and professionally? It starts with your purpose. What makes you smile? What excites you? What do you most enjoy your time, spending your time doing? The things that you do where time just flies by, that's a good indication that that's your purpose. Now, from your purpose, you can also find your passion. Your passion are things that fire you up most. They're the things that when you talk about, you're, you're enthusiastic. These are things that are truly contagious. As you talk to mom, to dad, to your brothers in the chapter house, or to others, they can feel your passion. From these two common elements, your purpose and your passion, you can begin recruiting a team. Your team is going to be the folks that help you truly build the organization that you envision. The team is going to be the people that are able to support you when you're down, to lift you to higher and higher levels. The team makes all the difference in the same way a great executive council and a great chapter can really make your time in college much more fun and your impact much, much greater. From here, it's crucial to enlist evangelists. These are friends of your organization, people that have heard your idea, they want to help you spread this idea, to help, to help you really build out the vision that you are pursuing. At this stage, it's important to name your community. It sounds a little silly, but by naming your community, you instill a new sense of community and identity. It can be something as silly as the tribe, the network, the movement, the DU boys, whatever it might be, it's, it's gonna be a, a critical step in this process. Let me take a step back from the theoretical here to the very, very tangible. As a business school student in England, I decided that I wanted to really work on my passion. I wanted to start something. And from there, I began, I began really honing in on my purpose and my passion. For me, it's expanding university access. I think that it's, it's totally unjust that here in America, your zip code determines your economic future in so many ways. I think that's unjust, and through my, my involvement over the last six years with DU, decided that a good DU man in this situation should find others that are also motivated by expanding university access and really get something started. From here, I began talking to people in my business school program. Many folks were interested. They became friends of this idea. They began telling me to meet other people that might be interested. And very quickly, I recruited a team. And it happened to be the right team. I met a gentleman named Han Xiao. He's Chinese, was also going to business school with me. And he's an education blogger in China with a million followers. That makes my 500 Twitter followers feel pretty puny. Me and Han got to talking, and very quickly we realized that with his experiences in China and some of my experiences in the US, we could build something pretty special. We then began telling some of our friends, hey, we plan to start something. Is there anyone that we should meet? From our mission, we were able to hone in to the second level I want to share with you today, and that's the model. It's very, very effective for us to really hone in on where our talent meets our passion. Where talent meets passion is what we call the sweet spot. In the same way, if you hit a baseball off a tiny part of the bat, the ball is going to go much, much, much farther than if you hit it off the very end or the handle. In the same fashion, if you're hitting it off the sweet spot when you're starting a new project, a new organization, it's going to go much, much better. I have a real passion for education, for technology. My co-founder does as well. He happens to have a great network, which is helpful in addition. When we put these things together, that's the beginning of our model that we begin working through. That's just the first step, though. You want a running start. Rather than stop starting like, just like this, you want to get like Usain Bolt, where you're sprung up, ready to sprint. In our case, 
That meant finding the lowest hanging fruit. Expanding university access is a huge mission. Where do you start? For us, it was honing in on a big pain that many Chinese applicants have, and that's in crafting a strong personal statement in fluid English. We realized that if we can connect these folks to admissions experts in the US and the UK and in Australia and Canada, we'd be able to help them to apply to university, helping students that don't have the best resources in China, that don't come from tons of money, to reach their potential through applying to university. And we realized this would be the lowest hanging fruit. This would help us get started. But from there, that's just step one. You then need to refine your model. You need to reflect intentionally about it. Think about where it's gone really, really poorly and what needs to be changed quickly and where you're doing a great job. The basic rule of thumb here is that you want to either patch up those shortcomings or cut the fat if it's just something you're not meant to be doing and to simultaneously double down on the things that are going well. For us, we realized that Chinese students really liked working with talented, motivated college students. We recruited more and more college students. Initially, this, this organization was two guys on a pull-out couch in Shanghai. My co-founder and I got very cozy on those warm Shanghai nights, unfortunately. Since that time, though, we've been able to really grow it out because we had the, we had the right mission that we were passionate about, and then we began really sculpting our model, reflecting intentionally, cutting the fat, and really homing in on our core offering. And that's what's most crucial about your model, really figuring out what you can be the best in the world at. If you look at a great company like Google, or like Apple, or like Microsoft, these great companies do a one or two things very, very, very well. And they let the other guys do everything else. Only when you become a total master, a total expert at your core function can you then start moving outward. But a startup company or a new organization doesn't have that luxury. Find one thing that you could be the very best in the world at. So we've talked about a little bit on mission and model, but now let's talk about building momentum. And there are a couple things specifically I'd like to highlight. The first piece is, I mentioned, I've mentioned a couple times now, friend of the company. What can you do with friends of the company? Write a monthly newsletter where you detail your, your progress on a high level strategically. What are the moves your organization is making? What are the moves your company is doing? What is, what is being accomplished? This enables your friends of the company, your evangelists, to spread the word and to help you expand your impact. Once you've really hit on your model and your mission, it's now time to really build out your credibility, your star power as an organization. The easiest way I found to accomplish this is to build an advisory board. This immediately builds out the business wisdom of your company, and it also can add great credibility. The final place is to really help folks share your narrative. Specifically, find strategic partners with good alignment and help press to share your story with a bigger audience. Let's, let's, again, take a step back and zoom in for how this works in practice. At the end of each month, I spend three, four, or five hours writing a newsletter on what Chase Future's been up to, and then I send it to the friends of our company. It's been very, very helpful in landing meetings with people like venture capitalists that otherwise wouldn't want anything to do with me. Because we're, we're enabling folks to spread the word on what we're doing, you're able to attract a much, much bigger audience of the relevant people that want to help you. Because as you start an organization, as you start a company, especially as a student, people want to be helpful. You have to give them the tools to do so. We also helped build a star advisory board. It really began at last year's LI in Chicago, when unbeknownst to me, the elderly gentleman at my table, wondering what I was up to after graduating from business school, happened to be the former CEO of McDonald's, Ed Renzi, who's a brother of ours from Ohio State. Ed Renzi now helps chair our advisory board, giving us great advice, helping us make better decisions, and also lending us credibility. Before our first customer, we had a guy like Ed Renzi on board, helping us to build out our impact and our foundation. The last piece is help folks tell your story, specifically strategic partners that can help you scale much, much faster, and then the press. I've used the basic template I've drawn out for you today to earn features in, in groups like Forbes and Harvard Business Review, the Wall Street Journal, the Chicago Tribune, and others. These folks are looking for interesting companies doing interesting work. And through this basic formula I've given you, by focusing on a mission, refining your model, and building up momentum, you can build a true movement. It's always a work in progress, 
And as Jeff Bezos, the CEO and founder of Amazon.com reminds, it's always day one. But as we move into our own future, with these basic building blocks in place, we can do incredible things. Thanks to the team that I've been able to help recruit, we we're beginning to make a real impact with this Chase Future project. We've already helped 50,000 people apply to university in our first 11 months. We've, and this isn't public yet, but I'll tell you because you guys are my brothers. We've just closed a venture capital round that's gonna help us really, really build out our team and expand ourselves just from China to Egypt, to India, to Russia, to Turkey, to South Korea in the coming two years. And it all goes back to these basic principles, whether you're working in low tech, high tech in the US or abroad, these basic principles can guide you. Remember, it's always day one, but today's our chance to get started. Thank you.